Today, we're going to prepare IETC and AIQ, two of the greatest technology ETFs. IETC is the iShares US Tech Independence ETF, which focuses on a broad range of independent tech sectors in the US market. AIQ is the Global X Artificial Intelligence and Technology ETF, concentrating on companies that lead artificial intelligence globally. A subscriber called Josh suggested this comparison, so I was happy to do it for him. And if you're interested in finance and investing, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. I'm Rick, your favorite Italian twin of Mano Ginobili, and this is the ultimate comparison between IETC and AIQ. Let's start, as always, by comparing the strategies of these two ETFs and their underlying indexes. IETC tracks the NYSE FactSet US Tech Independence Index. This index gives exposure to companies driving innovation in various sectors, like semiconductors, software, and communication equipment. Famous names, Broadcom, Amazon, Microsoft, Nvidia, Salesforce, Apple, and so on. On the other hand, AIQ follows the Index X Artificial Intelligence and Big Data Index. As the name says, it focuses on companies that potentially stand to benefit from the development of artificial intelligence in their products or services. The interesting thing is that it does it with global exposure, so not only focusing on US companies. You're going to find holdings like Alibaba, IBM, ServiceNow, Oracle, Tencent Holdings, and Meta. The focus on AI here gives it a more specialized strategy compared to IETC's broader tech approach. Since IETC offers more diversification across US tech sectors, while AIQ takes a deeper dive into only the AI space, I'm gonna give here eight points to IETC and seven points to AIQ. Next up, we have the expense ratio. IETC comes with an expense ratio of 0.18% which might sound high when compared to common ETFs like the S&P 500 ETFs, but AIQ has an even higher expense ratio with 0.68%. Clearly, IETC is more affordable for long-term investors, but keep in mind that specialized ETFs like AIQ often have higher fees due to their focused nature and probably higher performance. Nonetheless, IETC gets a couple of points advantage here. So I'm gonna give here eight points to IETC and six points to AIQ bringing the score to 16 for IETC and 13 for IEQ. Let's talk risk now, which just like investing in my channel, should be minimal. So you, I'm talking to you, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it yet, and you're going to get risk-free investing tips from the twin of Mano Ginobili. Now, both IETC and AIQ are technology-focused ETFs, and as always, tech can be volatile. Well, tech is always volatile. However, AIQ's focus on AI and big data means it's dealing with sectors that are rapidly evolving and can be more volatile than IETC's broader tech exposure. Considering that IETC has a more balanced sector exposure, I'd argue it carries slightly less risk compared to AIQ, which instead is more niche-focused and can potentially swing more due to AI's volatility. To get a confirmation, we can check the Sharpe ratio, and in case you don't know, the Sharpe ratio shows whether the fund's excess returns are due to smart investment decisions or are just a result of taking a higher risk. So the higher funds Sharpe ratio, the better its risk-adjusted performance. As you can see here, the Sharpe ratio tends to be higher for IETC. So IETC is inherently less risky. For that reason, I'm gonna give here five points to IETC and four points to AIQ, bringing the totals to 21 for IETC and 17 for AIQ. The fourth point is diversification. IETC holds 124 stocks. And it's quite diversified because it covers the entire spectrum of US technology sectors. AIQ instead, with only 84 holdings, has a much narrower focus and it concentrates specifically on AI and data-driven companies. If we check the overlap with ETFresearchcenter.com, you see that the overlap between these two ETFs is not excessive, with 24% of IETC's 124 holdings also in AIQ and 34.5% of AIQ's 84 holdings also in IETC. AIQ's holdings fall mostly within one specialized area, while IETC offers more extensive tech sector exposure. Nevertheless, what I like about AIQ is that it offers global exposure, so for this reason, 
I don't want to punch it too much here. So I'm going to give seven points to both ETFs, putting the score at 28 for ITC and 24 for AAQ. Next, let's discuss holdings. Both ETFs feature some big names in tech, but their allocation strategies differ. IETC leans on top holdings like Broadcom, Amazon, Microsoft, and Nvidia, while AIQ's top holdings are more focused on companies pushing the boundaries of AI, such as ServiceNow, Oracle, Tencent, and Meta. I find IETC's top holdings to be less volatile names, although I honestly like the presence of Chinese companies in AIQ. Nevertheless, in AIQ, I would have liked a bit more weight on Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon, considering that they are also companies that are investing a lot in AI. Since AIQ is more concentrated and sector-specific, while IETC offers a more balanced tech allocation on big names, I'm gonna give here seven points to IETC and six points to AIQ bringing the totals to 35 for ATC and 30 for AIQ. Finally, the most important aspect, performance. Year to date, IETC has performed solidly with a 29.41% return, while AIQ is quite behind at 21.32%. Just for reference, if we add the S&P 500 to the comparison, we see that even the S&P 500 year to date performed better than AIQ. Over the last five years, same thing. IETC outperformed with a 182.27% total return, which translates to an average of 23% per year. AIQ instead returned 138% in five years, which translates to around 19% per year. I know the difference between 23 and 19% might seem small, but it's huge, believe me. Now, if we also consider the S&P 500, the most famous index in the world returned 110.5%. So you gotta ask yourself, if it's really worth it to risk investing in a specific ETF like EAQ, which is extremely focused, extremely volatile, and tied to investors' emotion, just to maybe get like 28% more in five years. Moving to 10 years, you can see how IETC again had the best performance with 233.31%, namely 12.8% per year. AIQ instead returned 158% which is a little shy of 10%. For comparison, the S&P 500 returned 135%, namely 8.93% per year. Notice how the two tech ETFs in 2002 crashed more than the S&P 500, but had a better performance overall. This reminds us that volatile but promising sectors like tech give a better performance, but you also need a stronger stomach if you don't want to make that terrible mistake of clicking sell when the market is bleeding. So, in the long run, both ETFs have shown impressive growth, while ITC providing an edge even though AIQ is specialized in AI. So remember, only because something is trendy or because AI is going to be the foundation of every technological innovation in the future, it doesn't mean that an AI-focused ETF is going to return better than a general ETF. But for sure, it carries more risks. I'm saying this because in the last 3-4 years, I warned all my friends to not put all their money in AI ETFs, but instead they had to play it more conservatively. And now, they all tell me that I was right. Anyway, considering all of this, I'm giving 8 points to IETC and 6 points to AAQ, making IETC the absolute undisputed winner with 43 points versus 36 for AAQ. So should you invest in tech or particularly in AI? Obviously, if you strongly believe that artificial intelligence will be the thing and that all this growth is not already priced in the current market valuation of AI companies, then you can invest in AIQ. I personally believe in AI, but due to my investing philosophy, I never invest in topic-specific ETFs because I know that they always have inflated prices because of trends and I don't like gambling. I'm more of an investor that says, I want a portfolio that has an overweight on general tech because I believe in the growth power of technology. But I understand my limits and also probability. So I'd rather invest in more diversified ETFs so that I can sleep well at night and know that my portfolio in the long term is gonna give me a smile and not a heart attack. So what do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Don't be shy because my viewers are all interesting and respectful people. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to get more investing videos every week. By the way, if you missed them, let me put here two interesting videos for you. And if you don't watch them, I'm gonna be really mad at you. All right, thanks for watching everyone. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.